Pacific Rim Pacific, and it's Kids Rock. Uh, really good start, but I need more energy! Energy! Pick it up, son! Come on! It's Kids Round this week, and we're celebrating our wonderful Tamariki, but both teams certainly mean business. What am I? Welcome to Walton on a stunning Saturday night. So hopefully it's a, it's a good game out there. Yeah, um, I'm going for your team. Hopefully you win. Cool, thanks very much, mate. Welcome. I'm going to lie on the field later and rub myself into the field. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> One or two of the Hurricanes players will be bringing their children onto the field with them. Welcome to this week's episode of The Breakdown. I'm Antonio and I'm here with my brother Solomon to discuss all the best rugby action. That's right, we got loads to talk about. All the best bits from kids round of Super Rugby. Like Artie's outrageous dummy. <laughs> and we have Ian Foster, the All Blacks coach, on the show. Man, I'm gonna ask Fozzie some real hard hitting questions. Like whether he's gonna pick me as a starting hitman for the 2035 World Cup. Later on, Mike McRobbins is going to pick his Super Rugby Form 15. That's right, we got the three news anchor man to pick his top team. I thought he was from Strictly Come Dancing. Anyways, joining us tonight, we have Ricky Swinnell, Angus Taaval, Mills Muliaina, and Sir John Kerwin. So? Sir, hey. Sir, sir. Oh. Hey. We gotta you go, we gotta go. Here. Young fella's taken over. <laughs> Roll the credits, let's go. Kia ora, good evening. I don't know why they've got us lot in here. I reckon we get Antonio and Solomon to sit in and do the whole rest of the show. Ricky Swanell in for Curse this week. Hope you're getting well, Curse. Sir JK, Angus Tuttleville and Mills Monina for the breakdown. Boys, what a weekend. Highlight, JK, pick of the week. Oh, just the game, I reckon. It was so good. Blues, Crusaders, outstanding. Rugby at its best. Obviously, Angus will pick the <laughs> Chiefs game, but just real good rugby, Gus. Yeah, I mean, I mean having the kids around, I, that was a, a highlight for me as well. I think one of the kids in, in the Brumbies game talked about Andy Muirhead having hair extensions. But <laughs> obviously, the Chiefs as well at home. Probably didn't play our best, but walked away with the win. Millsy? I can't not agree. I think, yeah, it's been a wonderful weekend of, of, uh, of rugby celebrating, you know, kids as well. So I have to agree with, with the both of you guys. You've just stolen that thunder, boys. So. Uh, and the Highlanders won, so yep. Gold will be happy somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Eating oysters and... Oh. Good start oh. to the show where Millsy's already had his thunder taken. Right, let's get into it, though. Super Rugby with Neurofen. <laughs> We don't take lolly in. Well, well, his time. It yeah, is yeah. time. Not my time. It is time. I was living every moment. I got told to sit down a couple of times by Scotty Henson. I said, mate, I can't. Felt like we had them under the pump, but just putting that ball down was a bit of a, 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 an issue for us, unfortunately. So it just shows how how fine margins there are. It was a great, it was a great game of rugby. Yeah, this one, this one hurts. It was indeed a great game of rugby, great crowd, great atmosphere, big time players stepping up in big moments, and big moments, JK. I've just drawn made your something. own graphic. I've made a graphic for everybody. If you just beam on into that, <laughs> look at that baby. Well, I, wouldn't, I won't that? have you on the Pictionary team for a starter, but That's explain your graphic, my please. Fingers. Look at that. Bryce Heem knee was on the ground 
It was on the ground. That's the rule. And this is what you're talking about here. Totally. I don't think there's any need for that. Was there, JK? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, oh. Here we go. Let's see. His knee is down there. There it is. Knee down. Well, I don't oh, know. You might be able to fit a couple of plates under that, actually. See. <laughs> <laughs> see. So there was actually... The thing I loved about the game, um, Mills, was there was a lot of controversy. Yeah. It was one of those games that had everything for me. Um, you know, the Blues will go away, actually, with a bit of confidence out of it, believe it or not, because they probably should have won. I mean... Gus, I think there was a try that the Chiefs scored or was it the Hurricanes, I can't really remember. So I thought when a, when a ball gets knocked out and you force it down like Hoskins Satuta, there's a try. There must be some interpretation of it because it was the Chiefs game. I think there was a, like a clear strip motion, whereas maybe if you're looking at Hoskins going down, there's a, a bit of a punching motion, but... You know, maybe that's you need to go into the finer details of that. It feels like, though, that all of those moments, some controversial ones and all of that, they actually added yeah. to the occasion rather than taking away from it, Mills. Oh, it's an outstanding game. No, don't, don't, don't get us wrong. I mean, even when you say it's the Nurofin sort of moment, a lot of those guys would have been lining up at Chemist Warehouse yeah. this morning because, man, there was a lot of bruised bodies. But what I love the best about it is the big-time players stepped up. You know, they stepped up, and those are the guys when you want and sort of... Um, those tight games, um, when, you, when you turn a ball over, then they make you pay. There's no sort of waiting another two or three sort of rucks. And um, whenever there's a slight opportunity, guys, and particularly the All Blacks, really stood up and made other teams punish and made really big decisions. But it was an outstanding performance from, from both sides. I think Razor summed it up. Like, you know, we're, especially Blues fans, you know, we're really enjoying that they had a bad start to the season. But then to come out and perform like that, I thought Whitelock was outstanding. Um, I loved the duel at, at first five. I think when you play games like that, Gus, and you've played in those, everyone's got to play well, but you can still not get the result. I mean, yeah, it's tough, but the crowd there as well, and, and that's what we want, that, that it, those exciting matches come right down to the wire. And although there's some controversy, maybe a little hand there, yellow card talk, what more can you want from a, you know, what, what Lester's talking about, one of the best rivalries in New Zealand rugby? A couple of moments, though. Of course, the Blues with the, the disallowed tries, the ball's over the line, knocked over. The Crusaders' defence, it feels like every season we come back and talk about this and we can have a look, in fact, at some of the numbers that those guys put up this weekend from the Crusaders and how hard they are to crack. But what, I guess, the numbers won't show is the key moments. If you look at Richie Moonga, the, the tackles he actually made were try savers three or four of those, Mills. Yeah, and, and particularly at the back, we've seen that a, a wee bit from the from the tens. You know, Mitch Hunt for the Highland as well. He's had to make some crucial ones because when the line breaks happen uh, and it's one on one, you know, using his nous to sort of try and shout with guys, you know, to, towards the side and while guys while he's waiting for guys to get back to help. Those are massive in terms of moments. And so when when, when teams get a moment, look at that. I mean, and you, he's chopping big guys. Um, you know when they break um, when they break through, and you, and you have sort of that slight sort of split second to actually make a choice in terms of how you dictate that the other person that's in space. And I, I think that's been a massive growth of Richie. You know, in the past he's probably been seen as a, as a little bit of a speed bump. You might attack him, but the way he goes about his game, obviously he's got that attacking prowess. Uh, he's a wizard on that sort of front, but he's worked so hard to put his body in in those positions that stops tries and, and puts his team in, in a better foot. A speed try. bump. Well, wow. speed bump. Well, tackling was optional in my day, which is I enjoyed that it was an option. You know, I used to drift often off onto the touch judge because <laughs> drifting was good. But you cannot not tackle anymore. And I think Gus is right. When you look at these players at the highest level, they're always working on something, aren't they, Mills? And I think yeah. Richie's tackles have really, really improved. The thing that's really interesting for me, both for the Blues and the Crusaders, was that both tens are dropping back into fullback. So they have to make those critical tackles. He probably missed the one on, uh, on Mark Talia, but everyone's going to miss that. I mean, he's, he's, he's going well. But also, you now need to understand angles. You, you, you defend different from first five yeah. to fullback. I mean, it means you are a fullback. And those angles are hard to organise, and yet first fives have got to learn them now. You're trying to get guys in a position where you can make a tackle, because, you know, when you're in the front line, like he's always sort of been, you're sort of well connected to some, got someone on the inside or the outside. And often... And often they're sort of running straight at you. When someone breaks the line, you want to try to get things on your terms. You know, so when he's you know um, sliding guys to the sideline, he wants that comfort of the sideline. And then, you know, at least um, sorry, it was um, um, Talia or whoever it was sort of stepped inside him. He noticed that that's what he got in, got into. 
that's what I'm loving about it because it's so difficult to, to, to defend in the front line and then go back there and, and make those decisions, but then make a tackle. And then you have moments like that when they turn it over and you think, oh, you know, um, you know, he's going to kick the ball out, um, he dummies and, um, and away they go. And it's just, it was just one of those games that, you know, the big time players stepped up. Every moment was sort of, you know, won. And when, they, when, when a team won a moment, they made the other team pay, you know, with five points or w whatever it may be. And it sort of, then it, was, it became, came down to who was going to try and win it back. And I think that's where, you know, the whole the spectacle of the game, you know, lit up because it was that close. Every game we go to this season is going to see... We're going to look at matchups, aren't we? And I, I hate Super Rugby being a glorified all-black trial, but this is, no doubt, with a World Cup coming this year. And you look at Richie Moonga, Bowden Barrett. Who and how... Who edged that for you, JK? Oh, I just think both played incredibly well. Mm. I thought Bowden had a good game. I thought Richie had a good game. And that's what we want to see at the all-black level. You know, I think for us... Um, what you want to see is your 10 controlling the game, having a good kicking game. If you look at the stats, um, you know, pretty similar, really. Richie's wouldn't be too happy with his goal kicking. Um, you know, Bowden didn't take them last week, stepped up this week. But that's what you want to see. I couldn't really fault either of them, to be fair, and that's what you want all black. Yeah, I, the thing that the, the player that stood out for me was probably Finlay Christie inside Bowden. I thought he was everywhere last night. So there's guys that are probably on the fringe that you're starting to say, well, you know, are they stepping into that space? But, you know, the two tens were good last night. Speaking of Finlay here, I mean, what a time to be a nine. There's, there's opportunities with a few injuries going on and moving forward with a World Cup year. Finlay's been unreal. He's probably one of the best tackling nines in the game. And I suppose the growth he's had is that control, that leadership, putting, putting players in the right positions, and his work rate is honestly second to none. If you're looking, if you're from the other teams, obviously the Chiefs or whomever else, and you look at the Crusaders, we talked about a ropey start to the season, and now, you know, they come out when it really matters in front in a big game. You start to go, oh, God, here we go again. They're going to get rolling? Or is there still areas of the Crusaders game where you're like, oh, I reckon we can get them? Yeah, I mean... Don't talk it up too much. Yeah, you're in trouble. I, I, I know, but, you know, there's probably... You've seen what happened, you know, they've had two losses. Not what you'd usually see, and, and teams will smell a bit of blood in the water. Um, but it showed, you know, what, what the Crusaders are made of. What the Crusaders have done in the past, in that respect, and yep. every team will be going, whilst they haven't started well, they know that that's, that's a crusade, and that comes from the history of that, that, what, that, what they've created. They've had slow starts before, and they come like this, but you're right, there is an element there where there, there is vulnerability, and, and the Blues has exposed some of that too last night. They should have lost. The Crusaders? Yeah, and that would have made it a really interesting <laughs> season. You know? But they didn't, and, they, and, they, and they, you know, they can go away and they can be incredibly proud of the effort, but they should have lost two tries, go begging. Um, you know, last week we spoke, last year we spoke about the final and the, and the set piece not going well for the Blues, but last night, or the night before, was about not taking your opportunities. So against any side, like, you know, you want to play the Crusaders, you want to play the Chiefs, you want to play the Blues, you've actually got to get all those things right. Don't get them right, you're going to lose. Talk about teams taking opportunities. What about players taking opportunities? Again, we're going to highlight individuals at various points throughout this season, and one who will come under scrutiny at various at, uh, all the time is, is Roger Tuivasa-Sheck. Perhaps one of those guys on the fringe that JK mentioned, Milsey. What did you think of his performance oh, I last he night? Had a solid performance. Uh, you know, a couple of times. I mean, he's he's defensive. You know, came out of line and obviously missed a tackle. He scored a wonderful try. Oh, but I just think he's starting to get into a, a bit of rhythm. When he went off, I was actually quite surprised they subbed him, but Bryce Heem actually came on and he yeah, had an really outstanding dry. game. So it was um, a, a nice tactical move. Yeah, look, I think um, in rugby league, not very often you jump out of line, and that's something that Roger needs to learn. So he jumped out of line defensively before and didn't make the tackle, but that's one of his learnings. And, you know, when he missed the, the tackle on Leicester, uh, that was just difficult situation. So I think he's getting better. I think he'll continue to learn. Um, is he running out of time? Well, he needs to continue to show the form and keep growing. He, I saw him on the bench last night and I wanted to go over and give him a big hug because he just looked really disappointed himself. But he shouldn't be. You know, you've got to be able to, you've got to, be able to jump out of line in rugby and make those tackles. He didn't make it, but it's good learning. You know, he'll learn yeah. from that. Right, each week on The Breakdown, we get somebody to pick their Form 15. And this week, it is none other than News Hub news reader Mike McRoberts. Well, if you know where he's from, you won't be surprised at this front row. Joe Moody, Cody Taylor and Samaiti Williams going through to the locks. And, oh, look at that, Scott Barrett and Sam Whitelock. And in the loose, it'll be Ethan Blackhead 
Kiara Ari Savia and Dalton Papali'i. Going out into the back line, it's Finlay Christie, JK's pick, and Richie Moonga in at 10. The midfield, picked by Mike McRoberts, is Dallas McLeod and Thomas Umanga Jensen. A couple of left field ones there. And then out the back, let's define that Anuku. Sean Stevenson and Imoni Narawa. And here is Mr. Mike McRoberts. Kia ora, good evening, to explain his picks. Good day, Edifano. Mike McRoberts here, and what a great pleasure it is to give you my 15 after round four. Okay, so one, two, six in the Ford pack. They smashed it, the Crusaders force. Oh, so good. Huge shout out, obviously, for uh, Whitelock, who just ran that line out so beautifully. Barrett, of course, to Blackadder. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. I've put in Dalton Papali'i in an open side flanker at seven. I thought he might have just edged out Christie. And I've got Adi Savia at number eight. I mean, even though he's playing in a kind of a lackluster game for the Hurricanes, you don't not put Adi Savia in at number eight, right? Uh, went for Christie at halfback. I thought he was probably the pick of the bunch from the weekend. Richie, Richie Monga. Oh, there was that moment just after half time when he got the ball on his own goal line. They were defend, defending, defending. They, they turned the ball over. Any other first five in the world would have kicked that out. No. He loops a ball over to the wing, and there you go, Leicester charging down, picks it up, they score at the other end. What an absolute piece of brilliance. That's also why I've got Leicester on my left wing. I've gone for two unsung heroes in the midfield, and they had blinders, both of them this week, and I know that uh, you're going to say Umanga Jensen played at uh, second 5-8 for the Highlanders, but I've got him at centre, and I've got Dallas McLeod from the Crusaders at second five. I thought they both had outstanding games. Uh, Narawa, I've got him from the Chiefs on the right wing and Sean Stevenson, full back. There's not a single team being selected in the world at the moment that wouldn't have Sean Stevenson with the number 15 next to it. Fantastic, enjoy the round so much. Oh, and the Crusaders won. And of course, the Crusaders won. There is Mike McRoberts, Form 15. What I, what I like about this, I, for me, there's been a kind of narrative driven in the media for a few years, in some section of the media, about everything that's bad with Super Rugby, everything that's bad with New Zealand Rugby. This weekend, to me, was excellent across the board. It showed how good it is and how good some of these guys. Sean Stevenson, then you get a guy Mills like Dallas McLeod coming in and performing like he did. Yeah, he did. He had an outstanding game last night. I thought, you know, he really stepped up considering the injury woes that the Crusaders have had. But you're right. Yeah, it's it's nice to celebrate what's good about rugby and the things that sort of happened over the weekend. Long may it continue, JK, because we don't want to like to be talking about the negative stuff either. Yeah, but Mike, you probably should have had a red shirt on when you're <laughs> delivering that side, mate. Like, uh, and I loved the way you presented it. It was like a cooking show. I thought you got you know, a bit of salt here. and uh, Fantastic. I liked Umanga Jensen um, this afternoon. I think that the Highlanders actually needed him to perform. They needed that win desperately. Um, and he, he's had a bad run, but he is that type of 12 or 13 that we're talking about where it gets you over the advantage line. I mean, you talked about you know, Bryce, him coming on for Roger, how he just got over that advantage line. So, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of a couple of guys in there that are really interesting. I think McLeod, like you're going, oh, I thought all their All Blacks were injured, and then he comes out and and has a has a really good performance. He was quite subtle in what he did. I thought, you know, like stepping and um, obviously making his tackles. There you can see, but he's got that little step. He's a bit deceptive, and and I thought for him to come out in such a big evening and put his hand up and say, well, don't forget me, because. He's got uh, quite a few players ahead of him, probably. I think, Mills, you touched on it, that the injury woes and I think missing David Harvilli, but this guy's got that body size, and you saw earlier 17 tackles in that game, and that's that's huge. I think they made 181 tackles for that game, and that's what that was the difference, you know, holding up that stout Blues attack, and he was a massive part of it. Looking at the Hurricanes as well, and Cam Roygaard, who was excellent in uh, domestic rugby last, last year for Counties Monaco, wasn't he? And didn't he have a day out... Uh, for the Canes the other night. Just really taking his opportunity. You know, TJ Pedernato is obviously out. He's getting regular time in, in the nine jersey last year. He was outstanding, um, you know, for County's Monaco. And then he goes on the, you know, the, the New Zealand um, A Tour. Um, I like the way he plays. He almost reminds me a little bit of um, Jimmy Cowan. You know, he's really hard. His kicking's got a nice long kicking game. Um, so it's just confidence too for him, you know, being having you know regular game time. He's sniping, starting to snipe around the corner now, and so and also 
the responsibility. They've obviously given a lot of us responsibility in, in that position, which is he's actually blossomed from, which a lot of guys don't. You know, they actually sort of they take it as a burden. What we love as well as New Zealanders, we love an extra loose forward. You know, I, I was I was around where Andrew Donald's there. We used to call him Shuffles. You know, big. You know, Justin Marshall, big, you know, can be an extra loose forward. That's what TJ Perinara is, right? When you think about Smith, when you think about all the halfbacks that are in form, Finlay, Brad, everyone's in form, but they are quite similar. You know, do we need that balance where you've got that big sort of halfback that can play pretty tough around the rucks? So, yeah, I, th I think he's taking his opportunity. And for me, that's what it's about, Gus. You know, it's not easy at that level. And if you get your chance, you don't get too many. Well, that, that's hundreds of I mean, we talk about what Sean Stevenson was doing, Cam Ruggard's doing that. And he does have that, that bigger body. But I feel like he's not overplaying it too much. He's looking for those opportunities. And when it's on, two meat pies on the weekend, he's making the most of it. But he's also adept that, you know, that little inside ball to Safa Moore. He's got the weapons around him to use them. But those are creating opportunities for himself. And that balance, I reckon, will be, be key for him. Gus, to provide some balance to Mike McRoberts for Form 15, would you take anyone out? Would you change anyone? Oh, no, sorry. Who from the Chiefs would you put in yeah. and take I'm, out? I'm a biased man. I'd probably change the whole lot out. But to be fair, you know, we, we probably had a, a bit of a stoppier game. But there is one guy I, I, I have to pay a lot of love to, and that's uh, Alex Nankerville. And there's been a lot of talk about uh, Sean Stevenson. Well-deserved. He's playing unreal. But what Alex is doing in that centre position... You know, Anton Leonard-Brown's been out. Uh, Rame Kapoor, he stepped in really lovely. Quintu Pai is out. But Alex is, is a real leader in that position. And if you look, you know, we can talk about stats. He's right up there in, in a lot of statistical categories. And he's opening up opportunities for guys like Shooter to just thrive. He's, right. taken, the, he's taken the errors out of his game too, Mills, eh? Like last year, he would have a blinder, then he might have a couple of errors. He's taken that out. So. No, you're right. You carry on. Yeah. I just, yeah, just... Oh, well, let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep well, that, I mean, that's important because I've always thought he's had the quality, but he would come up with the odd error, and he's taken that out of his game. Yeah, but he's had to because look what you just mentioned. A lot of guys are out with injuries. He's had to step up. He hasn't probably had the freedom to go, well, actually, I can't play as loose as uh, I've had, been able to in the past because I've got a solid all black there that's going to um, you know, you know, fix things up for me. So now he's really taking on that responsibility of the actual leader in the, in, in, in the midfield? Quite often, you know, we can uh, forget how good somebody is, and this week's Musashi power play might just show us another one who is still going all right when he gets his opportunity to. Leicester find out Anuku this weekend, and, well, I mean, how you were there again, Mills, on, on uh, Saturday night, um, the work he put in. He was busy. He was very, very busy, Leicester Fang, and he's probably had a slow start uh, to, to the season until this game. That's what I mean. Like. Big, big guys step up in big situations. He did that. And JK, you mentioned he wasn't even supposed to be playing. I mean, he had like bruised ribs or something. Yeah, he, he, he had some bruised ribs. The, the interesting thing coming into the game, even I'd forgotten about him, not in a bad sense. I know how good he was, but, you know, last year he had a couple of problems, had a few injuries at the wrong time, and we're all talking about Sebu Reef and Caleb Clark. So he sort of snuck in there and he just exploded, and that's what we're used to, and I think he really puts his name up. For that All Black conversation, because he also covers centre, and that's what I reckon is going to be the, the big killer. We, I mean, we we spoke about you know Roger Tuivasa Sheikh and whether where he sort of fits in. I think we're almost pushing on to guys that are playing can play wing, but easily transfer into a different position. He can obviously play centre. Are we going to go for out and out wings? Is there is there room for two out and out wings? You know, so a Clark or a, or a, a Sevu Reese. I mean, this guy comes to the fold. You know, does now Sean Stevenson. He's in the, he enters the conversation because he can play other positions as well, equally, equally as well as what he has been at fullback. So when you look at the mix later on when they pick the all-black team, I think we're probably leaning... I'm, I'm more leaning towards, you know, a versatility on, on the wing um, more than anything else because our stocks at centre, to be totally honest, is, is um, a, a very sort of um, light given the injuries. I, I think that's almost... Not, not forgetting about him, but he's moving to the back, almost a product of, of how some people are playing. Mark Talia came on really late last year and earned that spot. And probably that, that end of year tour didn't go as well as Leicester wanted it to or, or got as many opportunities. But that's, yeah, talent all around. The power play, Musashi, Musashi power play. And, of course, you can get Musashi at Chemist Warehouse. We've got plenty more coming up on the breakdown. On the other side, we're going to catch up with All Blacks coach Ian Foster. But first, Super Rugby's Plays of the Week. Well, Arnold throws. Again, it goes astray. Holes. Slings it on, out and towards the midfield. Here's Barrett on the run. Times up beautifully. Now Morby, Naholo looming. 
but running out of room, got the pass away nicely. Naholo still going! Oh, that is a finish! That is a finish! Get back for a couple of decoy runners and then a nice play and a little chipper behind Narola on the chase gets the ball Narola try for the Chiefs now Richard Orton kicks out towards the wing this could be really dangerous Tui Vasa Shek gets to it no he doesn't Vaima look who's got it And they work on the points differential here. They're presenting Philip for Muirhead chasing his third of the night. Coming wide to Tool. And Tool. Simpson. What about going open side now? We dart and a kick over the top for Kevin Riggie. He's going to score. Outstanding vision. Welcome back into Breakdown. It is a pleasure to have joining us from Paris via Zoom All Blacks coach Ian Foster. But before we let these guys loose, we're going to hand over, because it's kids' round, to Antonio and Solomon, the true professionals, with the first couple of questions. Bonjour, Fozzie. Uh, just checking, are you the kind of guy that I have to ask for the application to uh, the next All Blacks water boy? Because I'm, uh, I'm ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you two look in pretty good shape, my friend. So, um, and I like your French with the bonjour. So, um, send me your CV and we'll see how we go. <laughs> On a more serious note, Fozzy, do you have any plans to maybe coach our side of the All Blacks, uh, maybe for Mags under 15s? <laughs> I'd love to get an invite. So, um, if yeah, you, uh, I'll make sure of that. Yeah, you make sure. But uh, how's your team going? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Heading strong into preseason. Good. Well, good man. We'll train hard, work hard on those skill stuff, and uh, you guys are the heart and soul of our game. So give it heaps. Yeah, thank you. So we've got him a new job. Great job, uh, boys. Um, Ian, what is it actually that you are doing in Paris? Uh, I had two weeks up here, two weekends, looking at uh, Six Nations up here with Jason Ryan and Joe Smith. Um, was at Twickenham last week, watching England, France, and then Ireland, Scotland, and Edinburgh. And then uh, yesterday was in Paris watching uh, France, Wales. In between time, we've had a few meetings with, I guess, with sponsors, gone to Lyon to check our base for the World Cup. And the next two days, we've got World Rugby meetings with calibration with referees. So that'll be exciting, eh? <laughs> Bozzy, uh, what have you learned from the Six Nations and how good are uh, Ireland and France? Yeah, both playing really well. I think, um, look, the Six Nations a great tournament. Uh, there's a lot of atmosphere around it. And, you know, I think uh, if you look at uh, France particularly, they started quite slow. They had an lost, early loss to Ireland. The first three games probably didn't hit their straps, but certainly um, the game at Twickenham and the game yesterday in Paris against Wales, yeah, they they're a team on the up, and it looks to me like they've really just got one goal in mind this year, and that's to play well later in the year. So very passionate country behind them. It's been amazing how much this country is uh, in France is uh, excited about this World Cup coming up, so it's going to be huge. And Ireland just continue doing what they're doing, you know, playing really efficient rugby. They're, they're big in the big moments of the game, and we saw that again against a, a pretty rejuvenated English team, I thought, and... Uh, showed a lot of spirit, but um, Ireland came back really clinical in that last quarter. Fozzie, you talk about uh, ref calibrations uh, up there in the north. Now, we've seen some calibrations down here in the Southern Hemisphere with the uh, Super Rugby and speeding up the game and, and the ability for the yellow card to be turned into a red card. We've seen the ball and play longer, more points, more excitement. Is there any sort of talk up north about that being implemented in the World Cup? Yeah, good day, Gus. You know, I've, I've enjoyed what's happening at super level. I think it's um it's been a it's been a good product. I think the speeding up between scrums, lineouts, and the trying to eliminate the down period's been positive. The, certainly, the yellow card to to red card flow we have at super level, I think's 
been really, really efficient in terms of dealing with with things quickly on the park. Um, it's another story to get that across the line at, at World Rugby. I know it's probably going to be a little bit of a debate, and I think there is momentum building, but it certainly won't be something I can't see happening for for this year. As as is a couple of the, you know, particularly the new rule about nines defending at scrums, and I think. Um, that, that's been good in Super Rugby. It's opened up a lot of attacking opportunities or scrums, but again, it's going to certainly not going to be part of our our uh, our game when we we assemble at the international level. Fozzie, I've got to ask. Obviously, there's a coaching or well, interview process happening at the moment. A bit of a saga going on. Don't get me started on that in terms of the timing. But you've been through this before. You've been through the process. You've you've come out the other end. You, you're in the environment. You know what's best for the for the environment. If you if you're sitting in that interview panel on that interview panel and you're looking at certain things, what would sway your vote? Is it is it obviously there's a tactical side of it, but culture also is a big thing. What would what would get Ian, Ian Foster's vote in terms of the next the, your your successor? Big question, Millsy. It's um, you applying or something, my friend? <laughs> oh, I got to got to hey. <laughs> Late, yeah, late, no, well, you, well, having coached you, you you're certainly capable because you used to tell me a lot of things. So it's um, <laughs> the uh, look. It's a it's a it's a new process. It, it's I think I've been pretty open about my views on the timing of this, um, and quite frankly, I, I probably want to not spend any any more energy on it. So I'm just focused on the World Cup and the people that have made the decisions. They can create their own criteria. But it, look, it's a it still remains a special job, a special team. It's multifaceted in terms of what what expectations are out of you as a head coach, and and um, and I'm sure they've well, hopefully they've thought through all that. Well, it's been a difficult time for you, and um, that's been pretty public. But you've got some staff there that have been there twenty odd years. Um, difficult time. How are you thinking about refocusing? And have you had a chance to get together with everyone? You had a two-day management meeting um, uh, at about two, three weeks ago, or two weeks ago. We were able to sort of clear the air a little bit and talk about what's happening and and I guess the uncertainty. So it's because um, it has created a an interesting vibe in the group. Um, we've uh, we're a little bit unsure yet what the processes are from for, for communicating with that group, but you know we're we're tight, we're we're really connected. I think the one thing that we need to share with people is that you know we're one hundred percent focused on this World Cup, <clears throat> and that's all we want to do, and that's all we want to be. And there'll be, but there will be some things happening. You know, already you're starting to see. You know, I think that you know Joe Smith announced that he wouldn't wouldn't be applying. I think uh, Gilbert Anoka's come out and. and made it a clear decision. There's some people that really wanted certainty early and didn't want to be involved in this process and, and there might be a few more. Ozzy, focusing back to the World Cup, you know, what to talk about is what's transpired over the last six to 12 months in terms of international rugby and I suppose how tightly contested games are and teams like Italy are coming through and, you know, looking forward to this World Cup, I think it could be one of the most hotly contested World Cups that we've ever had. What, what's your thoughts on the state of, I suppose, world rugby at the moment and maybe some possible banana peel teams? Yeah, look, I think the state of it's it's strong. I, I think that we're certainly seeing some massive strength and, you know, we're seeing two powerhouses emerge with Ireland and France, aren't we? Aren't we, Gus, in terms of they're coming through strong? We're, and we're going to have a lot of teams that are going to be building slowly in the next six months to, to be right. We've seen that in World Cups before. Oh, look, I think there's always banana skins at um, uh, World Cups, and they're probably not banana skins anymore, are they? You know, you've seen the effect of like a like a Japan <clears throat> that had a couple of big victories over the last couple of World Cups. Um, you mentioned Italy. Well, I think they've been one of the highlights of the Six Nations. You know, the, they've been really unfortunate in... Um, and not getting across the line for a win, and, and that's probably the, the next thing for them. But boy, they've um, rejuvenated their game and, and playing with with a, with a lot of width and fashion. And so I see France, the France twenty twenty three is going to be a massively competitive environment. You've you know you just got to look at our pool with France and and Italy. You look at you know you look at the the Irish South Africa and and um, 
and Scotland all in one pool, and that's going to be a, a, an arm wrestle as well. So, but that's what that's all about. You know, World Cup's supposed to be tough, and and what I'm also excited about is where we're positioning ourselves. Fozzie, I've got a really, really difficult question for you. Um, I know you've lived in Italy and now you're in France, so uh, French red wine or Italian red wine? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, a, a cheap bit of advertising. I like that Italian stuff with JK on there. Oh. But it's, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it is hard to beat a Cote de Rhone, I'd have to say, JK. <laughs> well, go and enjoy one, mate. Although it's only morning, but you can drink in the morning in France. Why cut a draft, no, Fozzie? No, <laughs> Off to the airport to listen to World Rugby for two days. Very excited. Hey, thank you. Have fun calibrating with referees. Um, Fozzie, we really appreciate your time and, and safe travels uh, heading back this way as well. Good luck getting a, a decent cup of coffee in Paris as well while you're there. Thanks, team. Look forward to it. See you soon. Calibrating with referees, that's going to be fun. Oh, look, you get the sense that if he had lobbed in something else around the coaching, the setup, and all of that now, it would just open up again and he is done with that conversation. And fair enough to him. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And he looks pretty relaxed as well, Mills. You know, like he's... You can see the pressure's off, and I think that's a really important thing. There's going to be a few more distractions in the next few weeks as we, you know, move down to picking the new coach. But what we need to do now is actually get behind this um, team, Mills. We're, we're actually underdogs too, probably. You know, we're, we're probably fourth. If you go around the world, South Africa think they're going to win because they win a lot. Because they always And do. France and, and Ireland are probably ahead of us. So is that a good thing? I think it is. I mean, we, I don't think we've ever experienced something like this. Where we've rocked into the um, the World Cup. Obviously, the Irish and the French, you know, um, you know, the way they're performing, you know, everyone's talking about them. I think we've still got the class. I think we've still got the talent to be able to go there and, and almost sort of sneak in. The key now and the exciting part, you know, after witnessing what happened in the weekend with that Blues game, is that how is that going to be implemented in the game plan Ian Foster goes to and, and meets up with, you know, uh, World Rugby and the referees and sort of the plan, you know, um, himself and Jason Ryan and also Joe Schmidt come back and say, well, man, look at the talent we've got here. Because I, I believe we've got the best talent in the world to easily go over there and win. How do we put this talent together in terms of, you know, just making sure it's we're all aligned and go over there with a wicked game plan? Gus, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of discussion about distraction. Now, you being a current player, what happens now if you're, a, you know, you're all black, you think about the World Cup, which you are, yeah, I suppose, first of all, I've got a feel for Fozzie. Like, I, I love him as a coach. He's a great person, loves, loves the role he's in, loves the boys, and, and um, you know, the, the group around him are, are, are A-class. So that's sort of decisions made now. You know, that's, that's going to come out in, in a couple of weeks. But I think as a player, you know, uh, it's focusing on Super Rugby now and, and not worrying about that in the side and trying to play your best footy to put your hand up and hopefully be selected in that squad later. I think if you get caught up in... All that stuff, which I don't think the boys are doing. I think that the current players uh, in the Super Rugby are really focused on Super Rugby first and, you know, eventually lead down to hopefully being picked. And I think they've come a long way from that. I mean, last year, for all of the debacle that happened after South Africa, you, it, that showed the guys care, care about him. You, you've even mentioned it too, and congratulations, you're now on as the first yep. name on the list for the Rugby World Cup. But I think that sort of showed, and now now's the time you're right. I mean, what we've seen in Super Rugby these last couple of weeks, I'm really excited about the players that we've got, you know, uh, that, that, that he picks, you know, and, and, and um, you know, obviously there's still a wee way to go, but it's the game plan that I'm we, looking forward to. We have never seen a 12 months like the last 12 months. You know, the CEO flies over, he might get the sack, and it's been a horrible probably 12 months for everyone, but now it's gone. And we can see that Fozzie's looking way more relaxed, and now we've just got to concentrate on getting, you know, that... World Cup team into the best shape we possibly can. Do we a little bit at this time of year, Gus, too, because the Six Nations have been going and it's been flying, we, Ireland and France have played some brilliant rugby, we almost suffer a little bit because everyone's like so blown away by how good that is and while the All Blacks don't get that chance to actually play uh, for another few months at least. Yeah, I, I honestly reckon, uh, one, the Six Nations are probably on a bit early for the boys to be watching it uh, yeah, over true. here in New Zealand, yeah. and two, like, the, the current standard in, in Super Rugby, you, you've got to be focused on that first, you know. If you start worrying about all these external factors, uh, you get caught up in that. So I, I'd, I'd imagine a lot of the players just focus on this, but it is weird because there's all these international games going on and there's no All Blacks. For me, the Northern Hemisphere's changed. That's the biggest difference. Yeah. I watch a lot of it, I've coached in it, and the Northern Hemisphere has changed. I believe we are now behind. So the Northern Hemisphere, I believe, could not keep up with Super Rugby speed, pace and skill. 
but now they've found a nice balance between speed, skill, <laughs> yeah. um, and they've still got some of that old stuff. The hardest thing, you know, as you would know, Gussie, when you go north and you two mills, is how much time the players spend on the ground compared to Super Rugby. But they have changed, and I think they're leading the way, and we need to catch up pretty quick. Well, we'll go first and have a look at the Six Nations and Ireland, of course, winning the Grand Slam. What a Paddy's day it was at the Aviva. The crowd here are just full of anticipation and expectation. Van der Flair back inside. Sheehan, gap opens up. Sheehan! And the place has gone wild. Oh, my God. Time to turn your shoulder. Direct contact to aid is high level of danger. Red card, red card. See if they can put a big man over Aki Henshaw! Ronnie Henshaw! Jack Conan tries to get it away. Sheehan! Oh, that is wonderful. On top of this Grand Slam performance, Herring gets this! Ron Herring! They've managed it. They've found a way, and Ireland are the Grand Slam champions for 2023. And the Aviva Stadium in Dublin will party long into this night. I reckon they're probably still going in Dublin after that. Uh, Fred Stewart was sent off for that shot yeah. that you saw. And, and look, um, Gus brought it up with, with Fozzie, and I hope Fozzie goes and says, you know, let's go yellow, and then it can be upgraded, because there's no risk in that. I don't think that was a, a red card. I think he was trying to pull out of it. I and mean, when you think about all the red cards we've seen, um, you know, a yellow that then goes to red, and it's such, a, such an important moment. It looked like he was trying to pull out of it. No, there was no malice in it. I think it was a yellow. That's the one rule probably that has been looked at, that if, if the, the Southern Hemisphere could coerce the Northern Hemisphere to bring in. He didn't say for World Cup though, but is it one that the players like as well? Oh, 100%. Like, it keeps the game going. I mean, I, I, Ireland series last year, I, I got caught with a little head knock and I received a red card myself. But they followed on and said it was, it was a red card, but up for debate. But that yellow card option, boom, get them off. They'll, they'll let you know, and, and they can take time to, to look at that, you know, in that situation, Jakob is out there in the heat of things. Yeah, I mean, not going to change the fact that Ireland in this... You don't agree, do you? No. You're shaking your... Oh, you're no, shaking, no, I agree. I, I, I agree with both of them. I just, I just think, like, it's, it's interesting, the interpretation, you know, and that's what they've got to get right before the Rugby World Cup you know, over there, you know, and, and sort of what sort of suits the Southern Hemisphere versus the Northern Hemisphere. So I suppose that's the discussion point over there, too. Uh, I was going to say, just say what it didn't change is how good... Ireland were and have been throughout this competition. Yeah, just to, just to round off mm. that discussion, it was terrible the beginning of the Japanese Rugby World Cup because the rest had gone away and they decided what they were going to go to. Um, the players weren't ready and there was yellow cards and red cards around the new rule. So we can't do that this year, so you've got to get it early so the players can adjust and the players will adjust. Um, but getting back to Ireland, they just have this, and we talk about it all the time, this, this incredible ability to hang on to the ball and they're very, very hard to beat because they starve you of position. And we're talking about what they did to the All Blacks, but what they're also doing in the Six Nations. I think France, I think they'll go away. The coaching staff, the French coaching staff, Gautier, will go away and be quite happy he hasn't won the Six Nations. Because I think that you got it at home and they'll, get, they'll just get that little bit of extra motivation. Um, and then we're just going to have to see, Mills, whether, whether Ireland can deal with being the favourites, because they haven't dealt with World Cups in the past. No, they haven't, but I think this is a different Irish side. I think this is an Irish side that are growing in confidence, they understand their game, they understand what it takes to be able to stay in, in the fight. If, if anything, I, I haven't quite seen the Irish sort of come from behind. Um, and, and I think that's, that's possibly an area where teams might, you know, um, want to really think about, you know, start well against the Irish, because they're, they're real, they've grown in belief. Um, and then they go into things that, you know, obviously, you know, tactically, um, their running game has, has been exceptional. So they're, they're on a high. No, no doubt they deserve to be number one the way they've been going. But, you know, we're, we're talking about the Six Nations. But we've, we're sort of... The one thing that worries me a little bit is we have sort of haven't sort of spoken about the other guy down <laughs> in the Southern Hemisphere, and that's the Eddie Jones factor. Um, <laughs> he's, a, he's another kettle of fish that we have to, you know, start thinking about too because the game in Australia is, is beginning to blossom. 
Well, one person who, who couldn't show up tonight, he's too busy having blue cod down south, apparently, but looks like the breakdown's gone um, global. And Jeff Wilson turned up on the Breakdown podcast in the UK this week. He's got an opinion on the Six Nations as well. Mm. But this is a France I've never seen, is that every week they they ever they don't, might not be at the peak of their powers, but they find ways to win in the games that they're not playing great. Yeah. And then the games they're playing great, they blow teams out like they did in, uh, against England at Twickenham. Like they just, yeah. they, they've got an ability to score tries in a multitude of ways. They're, they're the team that probably has the versatility um, in their game and their adaptability to be the clear favourite. Ireland, on the other hand, are, are, are just, I just think that the little step behind and I think everyone's seen now how they're going to play. They start believing, then the pressure comes on then, and it's whether or not they can handle that pressure. Did, did anyone have to do Zoom homeschool yeah, uh, during well, lockdowns? Because that's Goldie, what that looked like. Goldie, mate, listen, you're talking to young fellas, let them get a word in. And when the young fellas start touching their hair like yeah, old Jack did, yeah. then Tati gives them that one up, means they're, they're not even poor, listening. Poor old Jack, poor old Jack sitting there going, oh, I'm asleep with my eyes open. I'll, I'll, pretend <laughs> I'll, I'll touch my hair. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm still asleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, how, how did they? How, how did that happen? Did they just rip our name off? I think so, nice, and nice, roll nice. with it. You know, send yeah. the brand the brand global off the back of your your hard work. Oh, it's a big part of the game. You know, surely we're not the only <laughs> show that's called Breakdown, and they've they've taken it. But yeah, I mean, they they probably asked the first question, then Goldie just took over. <laughs> Should be called the Goldie Down or something. <laughs> like that. Well, speaking of classroom, because that totally looked like a pandemic flashback Zoom school or something. Uh, during Kids Week, the Chiefs went back to the classroom as well. Today we're at Hamilton Junior High School. We have students that are year 7, 8, 9 and 10. Huge amount of rugby fans, huge amount. It's a real technique to this mix. It's like, do you want it too much or too less? Oh, just like that. Just like that, mate. We are substitute teachers for the day and um, taking drama class. Shout out to Katie Howes. She's my old drama teacher. I'm a bit nervous that all my um, naughtiness back at the high school is going to come back and bite me and I might get a couple of tears, but I uh, should be right. Any advice for the boys who are doing drama? Just be your natural selves. Apparently they're the most dramatic players that we were given, so they'll, become, they'll come naturally. And then I feel like I have to get in there, I feel like I have to embody this, you know, for the kids to really buy in. Each of us are going to step inside the circle and say your name loudly. Uh, accompanied by a large gesture. What's a gesture? Movement. Move. Oh, Move. Show me your height. Simba. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do an example. So it's the... No, Tolpa. <laughs> Are you guys into it? No, Tolpa. <laughs> okay, what are you saying? It's an interesting question why I was chosen, but I'm doing the Te Reo class and um, just learning about Maori language. Maybe they want me to brush up my Maori. It's been a really fun class, picking up on the days of the week now and playing a little few games using the Maori language. It's been very, very good to get a, a look at the culture. Thank you all for welcoming us here. This is especially special for our uh, Irish prop here, John. Is, uh, he's been in the country for two or three weeks and his first experience of some Māori culture, so you guys are showing some great mana there. Look forward to do you guys proud and um, carry that mana with us, so kia ora, thank you. Here's Kelly and now Brooker Flat running a great hole and a great ball as the energizer Kendra Reynolds. Dement now, then pops a little wall back for Kotra, a quick shift along for Vahakolo, keeping the ball alive, the Blues, and Caitlin Vahakolo goes in in the corner. Now they line up once more, Michele to a lovely little shift out the back, Maliapo to the line, Maliapo powering through, Maliapo over. Five metres short, Marcel Parks, they keep plugging out to the right, Robbins Ritty this time around the corner, she does
Kiki. Now they're being pushed back. And now a nice ball over the top. Hohepa. Hohepa with a bit of footwork. They've got a penalty advantage, I think, for offside. Sabritsky now for Tali with an attacking kick. Along the line, and there it is. Layla Say. To the open side, Mahino Tauhinu. Now Chirpa. Trying to return favour for Paul. Trying to do what the Hurricanes did. She turns the ball on the inside. What a fabulous finish. Tanika Willison. 43-21. Chiefs Manawa over Hurricanes Power. Super Rugby Opiki already down to the finals weekend and it will be Chiefs Manua taking on Mata 2. Double loss for the Blues to the South Island teams, but Chiefs certainly, I think, Angus, I don't think you're going to disagree, go into that final next weekend in Hamilton, hot favourites. Oh, honestly, I, I don't think there's any other option. Uh, Manua, undefeated run. I think Carla Hohep is running around like a spring chook. <laughs> Tanika Willison's playing unreal. Luca Connor, like, I could keep, keep rolling them <laughs> off, you know. They're, they're champs, I reckon. Quick pick. Chiefs, Matatu, anyone give Matatu oh, a chance? Well, oh, man was, I think, yeah, there's no chance. Matatu, I mean, they've improved, they've improved, but, man, they've got a solid, solid team. Yeah, you wouldn't like to give any of the other two sides that missed out another few weeks, but I think the Chiefs will get up. Yeah, 100%. Well, these guys could talk about it too, but you can join Laura on a Wednesday night to talk about Everything is the women's game, and we'll dissect everything for it as well. Uh, Honey Hit and Me Smiler, um, the special guest, and me actually, so they're obviously running out of options because I'm in too, right, as well. So that is the women's game at 8 o'clock here on Sky Sport. Let's get the true pros in as we finish off uh, what has been a good weekend. And Antonio and Solomon, um, I reckon you guys are all out of a job after those, these boys. Yeah, you guys were good. Yeah? You reckon? <laughs> right? I was going to say, I can't take yeah, that off the Put those on, there. bro. Yeah. Put those on. Oh, you won't be able to I'm see. Gonna, these ones, bro. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> give him those. Blind, give him those. There we yeah, go. Man. You're probably not yeah. going to be able to see. <laughs> no job. <laughs> right. uh, before we go, neither of you guys can see. But uh, uh, Highlight, what are you looking forward to what next was that? week? Next week, clean sweep, New Zealand sides. Gus. Follow that up. May it continue good rugby. Continue good rugby and highlight I reckon for these guys next weekend is going to be sitting in those two seats <laughs> say, on the breakdown. You guys are awesome. So nice to have your family in too. Hope everybody's enjoyed Kids Round and everything there has been good about Super Rugby and Super Rugby Opiki this past weekend. Stay with us for all your footy action here on Sky Sport, of course, as well. The boys will be back next week. Hopefully Kirst is too, feeling a little bit better too. But enjoy your footy wherever you're going around the country. And... Uh, well, you guys got to go to school tomorrow too, don't you? Ripped off, ripped off. School <laughs> boys, are, boys are off to, off to school. <laughs> and we...